Now we're going to go ahead and create a function that will do this calculation for us and then call that function on a custom signal that our meal will create for us as well. So let's go ahead and copy this original example and I'm going to go into meals here and create a new utility file. So utils.py, paste this in here and just really wrap this into a function itself. And I'll just call it define, uh, you know, generate the meal queue totals for the user. And so I'll just tab this in and, you know, return that data. And of course, instead of J, just being user. Okay, but I'm not quite done. So the reason I wanna just illustrate that as an example early on was to just get it done. But really, this whole line right here, all of this should probably be in the model managers itself. Since I can create model managers, it will simplify the process a bit. So back in here, we are now gonna go ahead and say, get Q for user, essentially, right? So it's gonna be all three of these things. And that's gonna be get query set by user, which I already had the by user in there anyway, but then pending and prefetch related. Okay, I'm most likely gonna use this queue somewhere else in general anyways. I'm also gonna go ahead and include a flag in here and say include uh, ingredients being true. And so that my query set is actually just this. And then if I include those ingredients, then I'm gonna go ahead and return that with the prefetch related. Otherwise, I'll just return the query set. Because you may or may not need to prefetch this related every time. In fact, when we actually look at the queue later, you won't need it. That's why I did that. Okay, cool. Um, so let's actually put that in as default as false. And maybe we should call this actually prefetch ingredients, just so it's not confusing as to what it's doing. Okay, cool. Uh, so now, back in here, this is now get queue and prefetch ingredients being true. Okay, simple enough. Now I can absolutely get the IDs and I could actually do that from a model manager as well inside of the meal itself. I'm not gonna do that. Um, I could also get the recipe ingredients or calculating recipe ingredients based off of query set, as in turn this into a query set filter as well. Another thing I'm not gonna do, but it might be something worth doing for yourself later. The only reason is I'm probably never gonna calculate all these data items unless I'm actually using the MioQ. You certainly might do it on an actual recipe itself, but I don't know why. I do know why we would do it in the meal, but again, all sorts of recipe items together doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to make that um, a perfectly reusable method. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and create a custom signal now. So inside of our meals, we'll go ahead and add a signals.py here. Now, the idea of having a signal is mainly so that we can just have specific events for what happens. In other words, if we see our meal here, when we are toggling it, we create it and call it the save method. And here we don't actually call the save method, but perhaps we will change that to call the save method because I just wanna send out a signal on these statuses changing for any given instance. So in that way, let's go ahead and change this one up here a little bit and just go ahead and do for instance in the recipe query set and use this same status as before and just do instance dot and then instance dot save. Dot update does not call a signal that we do need to use to actually create our own custom signals. So this will for sure make sure that signals are being sent and the signals that we want are ones we've already seen before. So from django.db.models.signals, we're gonna import the post save signal. And then we'll scroll down here to after our model. And I'm gonna define meal post save. 
takes in center, instance, created, and args and keyword args. Okay, so I'm gonna hit pass for a moment and just do post save.connect to this and then the sender being the meal. Okay, so the signal I want to have happen is if the status changes, if it changes to pending or if it changes to, well, aborted. And so the only way I can know if it changed is by having two fields for status and one being previous status, right? This is just a simple and easy way to track the changes of the status. In this case, I'll also go ahead and say null being true and the default being simply none. Okay, and so the reason for this, well, let's go ahead and make our migrations first. So Python manage.py, make migrations. And it looks like I didn't put a comma here. Let's go ahead and put that comma. So make migrations and Python manage.py migrate. Okay, cool. And so now if I come in here after it's saved at any time, if instance.status is not equal to instance dot pre or uh, previous status, then I can do some stuff. The stuff I want to do is if instance.status is equal to, well, the meal status of pending, right? So that's one of them. Then I'll go ahead and send a, you know, meal added signal. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and send, let's say it's aborted, send the meal removed signal. And then the instance.previous status will then be updated to the instance status. And we certainly want to save it again. Okay, just a really simple flag so I can check what the previous status was. All right, let's go ahead and try this out with a running server. So we should see that print statement come through and we're in here in our items here. So I removed it, removed it, removed it and send remove signal several times. Okay, let's try that again. Added, removed. Added, removed. Cool. And so if I do all of these, obviously it's going to be added, 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 and then removed, removed, removed. Great. Now, the only reason I want this signal is so that then I actually run this right here, right? So in other words, I can, well, I can't actually import this utility method itself on this model because this utility method is including that model. It's another reason I'm using this signal. So, right, the meal model is right here. I can't actually use this one again. It would be, be a circular import. I can't import this in here. Now, granted, I could actually put this in the models.py itself next to the meal, uh, but that's actually why I want a custom signal so that I can actually send a signal out when these two things happen. Now, this is something that I might want to have on my entire application. I might want to know when these things are added. So that's why I'm actually using signals as well, as in, other parts of my application might want to know when a new meal has been added to the meal queue or a new recipe has been added. So to create the signal for this, we'll go ahead and do Django import Django dispatch. This is coming from the Django documentation. The signal we're going to call is meal added and then also meal removed. Okay. So these are simple. It's just Django dispatch signal. And we add in providing args and we want the instance, the actual instance that is going to be triggered from this signal, just like that. Okay. So now in our model, we are going to go ahead and do from dot signals, import the meal added signal and the meal removed signal. Okay. We could consider calling it Q item added, Q item removed, but I'm just gonna leave it simple based off of the model itself. So meal added and meal removed. So in here, we'll just go ahead and do meal added dot send. Now every custom signal, you declare a sender itself, just like we see in our connecting function here. I can actually use the exact same sender and I can use the same instance. 
And that's also true for the meal removed. Okay, exact same thing. Now, what we could do with these signals is we could certainly have one signal for each one. But I actually like having two separate ones for these two different events because I'm just going to treat them that way. Instead of maybe saying something in here saying like, you know, um, the providing arg, we could say something in the providing arg being like action or like what happened or status, right? And then we could pass in status being added. Now that would be another way to have only one. You would just change the status for each one. But like I said, I just want to have one signal per per action that's happening, just so it's a lot more clear for me. Now, the, the main reason for this has to do with when I'm going to actually use it. So what I'm going to do is actually implement these signals in somewhere that doesn't make sense, then I'll remove it. I just want to implement it to check that they are working as intended. So I'm going to get rid of these print statements here. And then I'll go into my articles model, something I haven't used in a long time, but it does have those signal methods that we used before. But in any case, let's go ahead and bring it in. So from meals.signals, we're going to import our meal added and meal removed signals. And then down here, I'll define a connect feature here. So meal added receiver. We'll just call it rec and do args and keyword args. And then we'll go ahead and print out added and then the args and keyword args. Then meal added dot connect, just like we did before. This time we don't actually have a sender at all, right? The sender is declared elsewhere. And then we'll do the same thing for meal removed and meal removed dot connect. We go so that's going to happen now in the article so we click on these and we should see these signals happening added 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 it shows us the signal itself it shows us the sender and it also shows us the instance that's happening here so that's the meal object for each one of these things okay cool so the the main thing is not so much the meal object itself for our utility feature right it's going to be the user not the meal object, the user that's associated to that meal object. So maybe there's another way to update this, but it's okay because I will end up using this. So let's actually see this also in our article model. Again, another thing we will remove once we implement the inventory requests. So we'll go ahead and do from meals.utils, import the generate meal queue totals. And now down here, I'll go ahead and say data equals to, well, let's actually do our sender and our instance and our user is going to be our instance that user our data will be from that user and then we'll go ahead and print out that data and that is what i'm interested in okay so let's refresh in here first i got to remove these now i'm going to go ahead and add two of them and what we should see is that data pretty cool and that's exactly why I wanted to use these signals. Okay, so there's certainly other ways on how we could go about doing this, right? Uh, but overall, this is to me is like a really clean and easy way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. I do not need them in this articles model because that was mainly just to test it. The way we tested it this, or the reason we tested it this way, is because signals themselves will be consumed on models.py, really nowhere else. So I can't actually implement the signal receiver functions anywhere other than models.py. Okay, perhaps that's changed over time, but as of now, it doesn't. It still works just like the post save and pre save and the other built in signals that Django has. Um, but now we have a really clean and easy way to both monitor what the previous status was, which is also pretty nice. Perhaps we'd want um, maybe more detail about that previous status. Um, and then we can also now let the rest of the app know when a user adds or removes any given meal based off of all of our features.